Well, I was traveling alone since I was 15. So you have to take care of yourself. You don't have your parents there. You need to manage your days. And uh, it really taught me how important it is to be taking care of yourself and, and uh, be really happy when I came, came back home. So I was not even three years old when I started to play. My father teach me how to play tennis, so I was really, really young. I'm playing like 22, 22 years. I have to say maybe sometimes it takes me one, two games to get calm and completely focus in the matches. But uh, in general, really, I have really good mental dealing with the pressure and with the matches. So, you know, I try to take as much as I can from every loss and learn from it and maybe do something different in the next match. I would say I'm really proud how I managed the transition from juniors to the women's tennis because that is really difficult and I see a lot of girls, young girls struggling with that. That's a great return from Kuzmova. For example, you move to top 50 or top 30 the first year or second year and then you know you need to get better for the next year because obviously all the coaches and everybody is trying to to learn how to beat you and then you know when you are 200 300 400 in the world nobody is chasing you but when you get to top 30 top 20 people know you and you are the one who is being chased and you need to confirm the points the quality of your game when they were young i was trying to teach them that every pre-season every year we need to come with something better something new better serving better moving improving the game improving the variety of the game this was the successful way i must say in the last 21 years i was uh, professionally on the highest level of tennis tour especially on women's uh, level the highest achievement that i achieved was with dominika cibulkova uh, she was number 12 in the world uh, playing semi-finals of Roland Garros and then Daria Kasatkina, number 19 in the world, Nadia Petrova, number 13 in the world and Janina Wigmeyer, number 17 in the world. So you can see now, especially on women's side, I can uh, tell you about Naomi Osaka. Very successful, but mentally absolutely weak. I honestly don't know when I'm going to play my next tennis match. <laughs> Sorry. But oh. okay, yeah. But I I think I'm gonna take a break from playing for a while. And uh, you can see that the mental part is as uh, important as anything else in uh, the highest level, especially yes. For example, Dominika Tsivulkova, she was not very confident in herself because all her life people were telling her that she will never make it, and then. The main problem, for example, with her was not actually that she was, let's say, being nervous or she was throwing rackets or having some mental outbursts. But uh, the main problem was that she would make a good result and the next day she would lose because she was emotionally so happy about the win that she was not ready for the next match, right? And then I had Nadia Petrova and she couldn't control herself and she would break rackets and she would scream. Also, Janina Wickmeyer, she was like this, you know, very nervous. So they just couldn't control themselves and they were losing matches because of that. And then, for example, I had Kasatkina, which was very talented, but a very comfortable girl. And sometimes she couldn't bring the fire. And she was also learning step by step how to believe in herself and really believe that she can do it. Because obviously the first step is to get to top 100 and then you get to top 50. and. You know, like I said, Tibuku and Kasatkina, they were very young when we started. So this was, you know, a long, long way to the top. The player, if, for example, we talk about Nadal, when they ask him, how do you work on your mental game? He just said, uh, every time I, I go on the court, I give 100%. It doesn't matter if it's match or practice. And that's how I mentally grow, because, you know, I know that I'm giving 100%. There is nothing more you can do. So this is important, the education. It's not only tennis education, it's the life education. Try my best in every single match. Uh, that's, that's all, that's all what I, what I can say. You know? Point for me, the most important thing is come back home with the feeling that I give it my best. And you can miss technically, but I hate to miss mentally. So <laughs> that's all. I think everybody get 
stronger with the wisdom. I always say everybody gets stressed because you have no options, right? When you have no options, you get stressed. But if you get the right learning from the coach, from the psychologist, from uh, the team, you get stronger because you can deal with every situation. If you are not developed the right way and your knowledge is not good enough and you, there is a situation which you cannot solve, you get in stress. Then the, the player is breaking mentally. Yeah. To say that on the WTA tour we have a psychiatric or a mental coach, I think twice a year we have to go and talk to her or him. And uh, I think it's really good that they're on all the tournaments. So there are maybe like two or three of them traveling like with us on the tournaments and I think it's great and I know that many many players are coming to them to talk. I think there's a, a lot of stigma behind mental health and a lot of people when they're going through challenges have a hard time opening up or addressing their feelings and because so many of the athletes utilized working with the sports psychologist I felt like it really kind of encouraged getting in there putting in the work trying to understand different emotions feelings things that I was going through at the time and I feel like now as an adult I have been able to have the resources in terms of being able to afford working with a sports psychologist or therapist when needed. And, you know, that's really key because I feel like I've learned so much through um, working with sports psychologists and different therapists over the years. My real philosophy is that behind every performer is a person and in order to be able to perform at our optimal level, so to reach that peak performance, we need to be functioning optimally as people first. So I always try to look at that, that person behind the performer and make sure that they're okay so they can perform to the best of their ability. Coping with challenges and stressors is a big one. A lot of athletes that I work with, their struggle has been around managing and coping with the challenge that they face and realizing what they can do to help themselves. There's a disconnect between how we want to be and how we are, and that's where our challenges come from. And just by understanding how they link back up can help us manage that situation so much better. So for peak performance, it's about understanding who you are as a person, how you respond to situations and coming up with some type of mechanism to cope with that. You know, we all face challenges, we all face stresses in life, but it's just how we manage them is what makes a real difference from one person to the next and within sport obviously there's so much pressure at different times there's pressure in training there's pressure in the performance side in a game if you're trying to get the last a goal last minute or the last basket it really comes down to what you're doing and how you're thinking in your head because if you're not concentrating it can easily be, be messed up but if you're over concentrating it can also have an impact on you so it's just about trying to find that peak element of mind activation to get you through it Poznávacia psychológia alebo zameraná na v podstate kognitívne alebo poznávacie procesy našej, naš, našej osobnosti súvisí so športom tým, že skúma myslenie, pamäť, koncentráciu športovca, emócie, motiváciu. Riešime ako športovec sa môže lepšie koncentrovať, ako môže pracovať so svojou motiváciou, ako môže pracovať so svojimi myšlienkami. Aha, takže, takže veľmi... Často pracujeme s týmito oblasti, oblastiami v rámci športovej psychológie. Tak jedno z takou silnou stránkou tej psychológie, že ide do hĺbky toho problému a rieši ho individuálne. Hej, čiže veľa aj trénerov majú možno takúto zručnosť a schopnosť, že vedia sa individuálne venovať tomu športovcu, vedia sa s ním dobre porozprávať, vedia ho pochopiť, a vedia možno nejak individuálne prispôsobiť a majú možnosť individuálne prispôsobiť nejaké metódy a techniky tomu športovcovi. Takže 
často skráca to rieši a príde sa možno na, nejaké, na nejakú drobnosť, na nejaké drobné riešenie, ktoré možno v tom bežnom tréningovom alebo súťažnom procese sa nepodarí zistiť. A práve ako psychológ nestranný, nezaujatý, možno sa dokáže dobre pýtať a dobre zisťovať, dobre analyzovať, pozorovať, čo sa deje s tým športovcom a prísť potom spolu s ním na nejaké riešenie. Takisto športová psychológa a ja pracujem viac takým systémickým spôsobom, že pracujem aj s rodičom, pracujem aj s trénerom, pracujem aj so športovcom, pokiaľ sú ochotní. A to častokrát pomôže aj to okolie vnímať nejaký problém. Pomerne častejšie, že športovci zaradiu mentálnu prípravu do svojej prípravy športovej. A tá mentálna príprava je postavená na tom, že používa metódy, ktoré sú práve zamerané, zamerané na to, ako preč, sa pripraviť pred nejakým štartom alebo pred zápasom. Takisto potom ako možno zvládať nejaké náročné situácie v tom športe, v tom výkone. Ako pracovať s motiváciou, keď napríklad sa mi nedarí pracovať s koncentráciou, keď niečo dlho trvá a mám rôzne myšlienky, ktoré mi odvádzajú tú koncentráciu od toho výkonu. Takže, takže je to už pomerne bežnejšie a už ako aj prevenciu používajú, alebo nie len keď sa niečo deje, alebo keď majú problém, ale ako štandardnú súčasť. Prvé je, že zistujeme, analyzujeme čo vlastne, z čoho má tú trému, z čoho má ten stres a aké myšlienky v hlave sa mu objavujú, ako s nimi pracuje, a či vôbec s nimi nejako pracuje, ako im odpovedá, ktoré sú pre neho náročné, ktoré sú možno také nutkavé, ktoré, ktoré, ktoré nevie nejak zvládať, čoho sa bojí. Takže je to veľmi taká bádateľská, skúmateľská práca. A keď zistíme, že kde, kde je ten problém alebo kde je tá náročná situácia, tak potom hľadáme, hľadáme riešenie, aby vedel s tými myšlienkami pracovať a, alebo teda aj na nejaké zvládanie, potlačenie trémy, nejaké dýchové cvičenie, nejaké relaxačné cvičenie. game cannot not be played. Everyone has inner interferences and have the game going on in their own hearts and minds that is distinguished from the outer game which has external opponents, external goals, an external arena, external rules. And in our culture we're 99% focused, if not more, <laughs> focused on the outer game. Excellence is achieved in a balance between outer game and inner game. And I use that with small letters. It doesn't have to be my inner game. Uh, so many people are working on inner game, overcoming inner obstacles that keep you from playing your best in whatever you're doing. When I came into a team sport aspect, I was like, oh, there's four other guys on the floor with me and I can't control everything that goes on. I can help my teammates as much as I can, but I can't make them put it in the basket. I'll tend to think about losing the game for much longer than I should. It's something I obsess over, over how can I make my teammates better? How can I make sure that every time I'm on the floor, I'm passing to someone who's gonna score? It's obsessing over every minute detail until I can perfect it and until I'm better at it. Uh, and for me, that actually took a lot of focus away from playing real and proper basketball for a long time. Since coming over here, I think I've got a lot better at sort of minimizing that obsession and understanding, hey, the game's done, it's on to next week's game. How can I make myself better for next week and learn from that experience? Uh, I'd like to think that now I'm in a situation where I trust everyone I play with. I have a lot of confidence in them. So when I give up the ball, You know, I understand that it might come back to me, it might not come back to me, but there's going to be a positive outcome for doing so.
Actually, this year has been one of the things I've struggled with the most. One thing I do is like I write down my goals for the game, every game before the game. I do like affirmations, visualization, things like that to deal with the pressure. And then we've also got a very supportive team environment. We're all constantly like backing each other up, making sure everyone's doing their job, happy with themselves, picking them up if they make a mistake, keeping their head up high because the head goes down in basketball. Then that's detrimental to the whole team. So we need to be positive the whole time. Team's the biggest thing. Pressure can be really tough in basketball. I think. Our team especially, we're great at bringing each other in, uplifting each other, making sure that uh, we understand that we support each other, even in those high pressure moments. And uh, I think as a team, we do an exceptional job with that. The mental approach by a player is really important because they have to, they have to be able to deliver in, in, in high pressure situations. So he or she needs to be able to be mentally very tough and to be in a zone and, and ensure that their focus is just on the task at hand and isn't, isn't um, I suppose, uh, sidetracked by, by other issues that, that are not really relative to what they're trying to achieve. Within a team, you, you have a role and that role could be a major role or it could be a uh, I wouldn't say a less important role, but it could be a more of a minor role within your team. So I think you're, 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 if you're a team player, your your performance isn't just about you. It's 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 ensuring that everyone gives the same efforts and that everyone wants wants to win and wants to perform as much as you do. I played team sports, kind of all grown up, and then transitioned into basketball from rugby. Um, a lot of it is about communication. That's the biggest thing in a basketball court. Um, the team that communicates best wins the game at the end of the day as well. It's just physical conditioning, mental conditioning is a huge part of basketball as well, more so than other sports I've found. Because we tend to be you know, some high pressure moments. Uh, but yeah, and also just how to work with your teammates is the best thing. Basketball's taught me a lot about teamwork and communication and a lot about people management. Um, Coming from a background of an individual sport, I had to learn a lot when I stepped into basketball that it wasn't just all about me and that I had a whole team around me who I needed to support and facilitate. The team can be very good, but you ask me to surround the body of a lot of guys or, or, or female players in a situation where female have who support their teams. Individually, when you play an individual sport, it, it's pretty tough because it's just you and you have to try and achieve against competitors but a lot of time unless you have a very good support network that's a really tough challenge sú športy ako napríklad tenis a golf ktoré sú náročnejšie na tú mentálnu stránku športovec tam je sám dlho to trvá je tam veľa priestoru na chyby jedna nejaká zlé zahrana lopta môže ovplyvniť ten zápas, takže je tam veľa priestoru na premyšľanie, musí spolahnúť len sám na seba. A v tých kolektívnych športoch je tá zodpovednosť niekedy rozložená, takže to môže pôsobiť ako, ako menší stres. You know, sometimes I kind of watching, I don't know, basketball or something and I look at them and their team and it looks fun, it looks much more relaxed and that's why I always love to play for Slovakia because we are a team and, you know, there are five girls there and captain and team around and that's why I always love to play for all those teams' competition because it's something different and I'm really looking forward to it every year. It's much less stressful, actually. It's two of you on the court and you can talk to someone mm-hmm. singles is is tougher and like i put my i put more pressure on singles if you were to feel lower anxious there's people who are they're going through similar things with you all the time so that potentially reduces the anxiety or, or low moods or if you are feeling them it's there's that support there in place that's true because you have a support system of your teammates around you you want to perform for those 11 other guys on your team those 11 other guys are also there to pick you up after you don't perform. You know, in an individual sport, you don't perform, you go home, and you sit with your own thoughts for hours on hours. Whereas with basketball, if we take an away game where we have to travel four hours to get there, we have four hours back with our teammates to talk about what happened, you know? And 
we are in a great environment with very supportive teammates. You can talk about, you can rant with your teammates stuff and also in the moment. There's four other guys on court who will kind of come around you, like on court we quite often, someone makes a mess up, dead ball situation, off go into a huddle. It's all right, we're okay, we messed up there, lost the ball, that's okay, next play, we're getting it back. You don't have that kind of niggling away in the back of your head because you've got four of the guys who won't let you. They'll hold your camera and know, okay, right, you're done, move on, let's get it. Same thing on the way back from the way trip. You're sitting there, headphones on, dwelling on your own thoughts. Someone will nudge you and go, hey, come on, move on. Like, let's chat about it, let's just have a laugh, let's talk about something completely different. Let's just remove ourselves from the game. And just kind of, that helps us, that kind of forces you out of your own, like your own head, which is really important sometimes. There's definitely differences between team and individual. I think we always think about the gym side of, of being an athlete, the training session, the, the skill set. You know, if you're playing rugby, you need to be able to pass the ball backwards. These are all like basics that you need to do to be able to play in the sport. But just like we have physical fitness, we have mental fitness. And if you're not functioning in the right way in, in your side, your head, we can't expect people to be performing because it's mind and body for a reason. If we didn't need a head, we wouldn't have one. Definitely the mental side needs to be something we prioritise. It's really important to make it normal. Obviously there's a lot of stigma around mental health, about weakness within sport and all that. But I think if we could make sports psychology within the sporting world as important as physio and nutrition, we are then in a much better place to say we're looking after our athletes. And potentially we could learn a bit more about that difference between the individual and the team environment as well, which could help set up more issues like this that people can learn from them, get to know a bit more about them. Thank you.